Health. I am Dr. Pam Middleton, your virtual holistic physician. Through my books, programs, and services, I help families achieve and maintain health and wellness through inside out healing. So today, early this morning, I saw mm -hmm. an article about a six-year-old who was arrested at school and taken to jail or to the police department by a police officer and I became enraged okay I am so proud of myself right now I you know obviously a lot of time has gone by and I'm very calm and I can come in here and I can talk about this and sound like a sane rational professional woman this morning honestly I must tell you that would not have been possible okay um and so I did some research because I posted this across, you know, my different pages on Facebook. I've gotten a lot of comments. Yes, Destiny, it was really hard to see. So um, the entire story seems to be, well, what I saw at first was basically a six-year-old begging not to be taken away in handcuffs it, it they actually put a zip tie on her but in her head it was the same thing i mean you know she's seen tv she's seen people going to jail put their hands behind their back and they put something on your hands she couldn't see what it was this poor child was you know traumatized by this and what was her crime she actually um had a tantrum at school and was kicking and punching the staff so originally I was extremely upset at both the staff at the school for calling the police on a six year old and the policeman for actually like taking her away. But upon further investigation, I found out that this officer was actually um, a resource and I, he was a school resource officer. Hi, Tara Shanda. I hope I did not butcher your name. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, he was actually a resource officer who was obviously still at the, you know, already at the school. So what I did, I was like, okay, let me, let me look this up. And so I'm going to read to you what, what I found about what the resource officer's job is. So school resource officers are police officers who work in elementary, middle, and high schools. They are responsible for working with school administrators, security staff, and faculty on developing comprehensive safety plans to ensure schools are safe places for students to learn. Now, they have, uh, you know, their duties can include safety plan development, internal dispute mediation. So now this is where I figured this is where we know a lot of um, the, the resource officers come in. So... If a student, well, basically, they're one of the first lines of interaction in terms of breaking up fights and de-escalating aggression between students or between students and staff. Okay, so detention and arrest. If a student is caught breaking the law, by breaking the law, things like drinking or using drugs, bringing a weapon to school or making threats, part of a resource officer's job description may be to detain or arrest the offender. Lesser infractions, like maybe a six-year-old who's having a temper tantrum. Okay, let me calm down again. <laughs> See, I'm getting a little bit upset again. <laughs> okay, but anyway, lesser infractions may be remanded to the principal or vice principal for punishment such as detention or suspension. So what I could not figure out for the life of me is why did this police officer take it upon himself to decide to arrest this child, put her in a police car, and take her to the police station. Now, the other thing I found out, because we all know that this officer got suspended. Now, one of the reasons he got suspended is because he's not he does not have the authority to arrest anybody under 12 without clearing it with his commanding officer, which he did not do. And to add insult to injury, this is the second child that this person has done this to. This is ridiculous. So 
Now, let me calm myself down. Let me calm myself down. <laughs> you know, on the, you know, the comments, of course, were kind of in the same tone that I'm going to. And there were a lot of people who were mortified as I was that what conditions would make somebody arrest a child. Now, you know, yes, I understand children can have tantrums. And based on the description of what this child did, this happens to me all the time as a pediatrician. You know, kids are kicking and screaming and punching and, you know, they don't want to be examined or they don't want to get a shot or whatever. But the thought of calling um, the police has never crossed my mind. Now, let me go on the other side of that. So a lot of the things I heard, I heard from, you know, um, educators who have said that, well, there are some times where, you know, if you're in a school system where you have a lot of kids with behavioral problems, sometimes it is necessary, you know, to, to call the cops. But this was not one of those cases. And um, and I do know, I understand that there are some children who have serious behavioral problems that really they may hurt themselves. They may be, you know, a danger to themselves or to others. But we looked at the film. We saw this little girl. This little girl was just mortified. And at this point, even if somebody was, say, trying to scare her straight, at the point where he came in and threatened to take her somewhere, she was done. He could have said, if you know, if you don't do this, you the next time you may have to go to jail or whatever. I still wouldn't agree with that, but it would have been better than actually taking her. But she would have done anything. She would have calmed down. Um, now, yeah, no, if they allowed parents to come and be parents. So, yes, that's another thing that was said. Uh, there are a lot of things that have changed because, you know, my mother um, is a retired school teacher. And so obviously, you know, back in the day, as one of the commenters, uh, one of the posters said, these are, this totally different, you know, teachers aren't allowed to do things. Parents even are afraid to discipline their kids now. There, there's a lot that's changed. However, um, I still feel like as parents, you know, the reason I wanted to do this was to educate parents on what you can do so that your child is never in this situation. So as parents, you should know what's going on in your child's school. And I see you're not talking about spanking, but still, just whatever. This is something parents can do. Okay, an example of what a parent can do. Let's say you know that your child has some behavioral issues because what came out was the grandmother of this child said that the child had been having some problems with sleep and ever since she'd been having her issues with sleeping, she's been acting out, you know, and, and having some behavioral issues. So this was obviously an issue that was known about. So if I have a child, and even if you don't have a child with an issue, you never know what kind of bad day your child might have. So let's just say the first thing you want to do is you want to have a relationship with your, your child's teacher. I, you know, I know a lot of educators right now who say that, you know, parents don't show up for the PTA meetings. They don't hear anything from the parents unless it's something petty, you know, like I mentioned to a child that he should pull his pants up or something. And then all of a sudden the parent is here the next day saying, yeah, my son said that, you know, you said something about his clothes, but this child may have been not having good grades all year. No parent ever showed up for anything. So. First of all, I'm going to say that it has to start at home. You know, um, your children should be taught how to behave at home in your house. The school, the teachers are not there to be surrogate parents for them. Okay, so I will say that. Now, the other thing that you can do is, like I said, have a relationship with your school, with your child's teacher, and have a plan. You can say to the teacher, look, if you ever have any problems with my child, um, call me. And if you know maybe you're working, you can't come pick up your child, have someone else. Like, you know, I may say, you know, I, I may not be able to come, but you can call my mother-in-law during these hours. What do I need to do? What do I need to fill out to give my mother-in-law permission to come and pick my child up if something happens and, you know, they're not being cooperative. You know, something like this where the school already has a plan because I can guarantee you if you've had that conversation with the teacher and your child starts to act out, 
the teacher is going to start to reinforce that. The teacher is not going to automatically call the resource officer or even if the resource officer shows up, the teacher could say, oh, well, you know, um, this child's mother told me to call her if we have any problems. So I'm just going to call her mother or her grandmother or whatever. And so those are kind of things that you can do to be proactive because obviously you never know what can happen. Like in this case, there's a resource officer at the school and there are obviously resource officers at a lot of the schools now. And they are probably there more so to protect the children. I thought to protect the children from outside influences, but now, you know, and, and I won't even say that they're all going to be bad. This guy is obviously just a bad apple because he got fired immediately. And you guys know that normally, you know, with police officers, they get put on, you know, they are suspended with pay pending investigate. This was, you know, this guy was fired. Now, mind you, this did happen in September. So I don't know how long it took for him to get fired, but it didn't sound like it took that long, especially when they found out that this was the second time that he had done this. Um, but I just wanted to come on and, and share with you, you know, some of the things that were that were shared in the comments. And I was hoping that there may be some educators on. So is anyone on right now? An educator, um, if so, say something, speak up, speak up if you've had an issue. Now, the other thing that I will say is that one of my colleagues, because, you know, we know that things can happen. And another one of my colleagues actually posted this on Facebook today that, um, that she had a situation in her pediatrics office where a child came in and basically was out of control, was throwing things around the office. Um, you know, the the child was there with a foster parent. So the foster parent isn't allowed to touch this child. And the foster parent actually had like marks on her from where this child had actually attacked her. So, you know, as much as the pediatrician totally understood what was going on, there was no way to really control this child without getting protective child protective services involved. So what she did was she called the police because she needed somebody to like calm this child down. And like someone said, you can't touch children, you can't do things. So her and the foster parent couldn't just snatch this child up and remove the child without possibly having um, some legal action taken you know, against them. But what she did do is she did call the cops. She didn't want to do it, but they handled it totally different. They came, they just literally removed the child. They took him outside. I think they put him in, I don't even know if they put him in the car, but he calmed down when these cops came and physically removed him. And what they did was basically they kept him calm until someone from Child Protective Services came. Um, you know, to, to handle him. So there are a lot of ways of doing things, but you know, these cops didn't just come in and handcuff this kid and, and take this kid, you know, to the police station. That's, I, I just still don't understand why this person thought that that was the best thing to do to a six year old. And like I said, there are instances where kids are out of control and we could see on the video, I don't know what the child was doing before, but by the time this officer was getting ready, was like zip tying her hands behind her back, she was, all she was doing was just begging for him not to do that, okay? She, whatever had been going on, she had calmed down. So, um, you know, so I just wanted to come in and and say that it's just, you know, it's, there are things that are going on with children and different children. And especially if your child has sometimes, you know, children have some type of behavioral issues. If you know that your child or a child that you care about has behavioral issues, make sure that there is some type of plan in place so that this child is, you know, is never subjected to what this little girl was subjected to. Because what, what one of my commenters was saying was, you know, suppose this child really mm -hmm. somehow got processed somewhere. Um, and 
got abused somewhere as a part of, you know, being in an environment that she really didn't need to be in even for a short period of time. Luckily, in this case, as soon as this child was taken to the police station, you know, like nobody, the school did not file charges and, you know, they immediately returned this child to school and, you know, called her, her parent or guardian to pick her up. But, um, you know, it, I just, I'm still in disbelief that it just even went that far. Like, I just don't see a reason for it to have to have gone that far. And I'm looking at, I'm trying to pull up, I'm going to pull up um, some of the comments by the people who are educators. Because, you know, are people who, because a lot of the comments basically were saying that there are some situations that things get really out of control. But the overall, the overall um, sentiment was that this was not one of those cases. And um, there are some things that need to be done. And obviously, there's a lot, there's a lot wrong with, you know, a lot of the systems that we have in place right now, but we have to find ways to work through those systems. Um, you know, if those systems are already in place, we have to figure out what we can do to either undo some of the things that are being done. Or like I said, if you, individually, you just want to make sure that your child is not going to be subjected to that. And the way that you make sure that your child is not subjected to that is to have a relationship with your child's teacher and to find out what's the protocol at their school. Like, you know, first thing I would be doing is calling my school and saying, do you have a resource officer? Can your, re you know, depending on how old your child is, does your resource officer have the authority to arrest my child, you know, for whatever reason? And then you can say, well, if my child acts out, I would like a phone call because that's the first thing that should be done to me is that you call a parent, uh, you call a parent and you get that parent to come and pick their child up and, um, you don't have an officer to arrest a child. And I just, I just will never get past that one. Not in this case, because I saw, you know, the outcome of it. And this child was totally calmed down by the time this officer was taking her away. And I guess to add insult to injury, um, that he was asked the question by someone at the school, is it necessary to restrain her? And his answer was, yes, if she was older, I would put handcuffs on her. You know, like this dude, Ugh. you know, it was like he got some type of perverse pleasure in this. He even went on talking about how many arrests he had made and what was the youngest child he had arrested. The youngest, youngest child was like eight and then they said, he said, well, how old is she? Is she eight? And they said, no, she's six. And he was like, well, now she's the youngest one. So now six is my youngest. Almost like he was bragging about it. Like he was proud of it. I'm like, really, dude? This is just like ridiculous. I can't believe it. I am so glad that he was fired. And also, I'm sure that I read that there, he was actually investigated for something that was done to his own child that was probably not right. So I think that this person just has some type of a issue. He's got some type of issue, like authoritarian issue or thinking that, you know, I don't know if he's trying to do the scared straight, whatever thing, but he's out of control. And I am so glad that he is fired because he needs not be around anybody's child ever again. Um, and so I went off on that tirade and never did find what I was looking for. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here it is right now. Let me let me read um let me read some of the con like um one person said that you have to work in a school system that has extreme discipline problems to understand how it can happen and there are not a lot of solutions. So, like I was saying, I I do understand that in certain situations it may be necessary, you know, for the safety of that child and for the safety of the other children and of the staff. That is understandable, but that wasn't the case here. Now, another friend had a, you know, had a very 
you know, her statement was that there should have first been a call home than to Child Protective Services. You know, like basically what happened from the pediatrician's office. Um, call people equipped to help this child and are safely removed them from the school. Okay? Which makes sense. So you've got the resource officer. The resource officer was there. He could have removed this child from the classroom and then they could have called Child Protective Services, home, wherever. There was no need to take this child off of the school premises, um, basically under arrest, okay? Um, and um, and like someone says, to call folks with guns on a six-year-old is counterproductive, but now we know that he was actually already there. Um, and one of the things, and this person who's saying this is an attorney, so she probably knows that these things have happened. She said, um, you know, she knows that no educator would want to see uh, this six-year-old shot or raped or abused in custody, um, which, and those are all real possibilities for any of the behaviors that she's accused of. And see, and this is the thing that I was saying, this is the problem because this this child will probably still be traumatized, but luckily she was not subjected to being in custody for an extended period of time where something like this could have happened to her. But who knows what, what has happened to other children. And so, um, you know, make sure that you speak like any friends you have who have young children make sure that they are involved with their child's school have a you know have a talk with the teachers heck this may be something that may need to be some type of forum at the school where you know someone comes in and, and you have a conversation about this and you know this is something that may come up at pta where let's talk about discipline problems and what happens if your child um, you know, is giving problems at school. What what are the potential outcomes? I think parents need to know this and you need to make some type of plan for this. And, you know, and the schools need to um, be honest with parents as to what can happen because I just still had no idea that a six-year-old could be arrested. And obviously they really can be with permission from like a commanding officer, but there was no need for it at this time. Now, it would have been different if this child had like a knife or a gun because that's what someone else was saying that, you know, they have been, they've known um, children as young as six to actually have loaded guns in their lockers at school. That's a totally different case than what we're talking about right here. And, you know, and that's one of the reasons probably that you even have a resource officer in an elementary school because these things happen. But that was not the case with this child. This was total, total abuse of authority and very unwarranted. So just make sure that you're protecting your kids. Okay. And with that, I am going to say good night. Are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions about anything? I don't see any more um any more comments sometimes there's a delay um so i'm gonna wait a minute just in case someone does have a comment if you have any questions um let me know oh and i'm going to um because i see some new people on here that may have not um may have not joined me before if you have um young children or you know of somebody with young children and you would like to get um, I have a free uh, five must-have natural remedies for your child download. Um, go to uh, www.drpam.gift. So go to drpam, D-R-P-A-M dot G-I-F-T. And you will be able to get that. I will actually put that link in the comments um, when the broadcast is over. So if you, if people are looking at the replay or you didn't get it, the link will be there. You can go there, get that free download um, and um, continue to join me for information about both children and adults. Um, this page 
is actually going to become more information for grown people, like general health concerns. Um, and I have a special group for uh, where I'll be doing things about the, the children. But tonight, this was something that I just had to come on this main page to talk about because this was just something that I could not, I could not let it go. Okay. And so um, you can follow me at um, theholistichuddle.com. That is my Facebook group for parents who are holistic minded. I want to learn more about holistic treatment options for their children. Okay, so with that, I'm going to bid you farewell on this Wellness Wednesday. I am Dr. Pam Middleton, your virtual holistic physician. Through my books, programs, and services, I help families achieve and maintain health and wellness through inside-out healing. Thanks for joining tonight. Bye-bye.